case study? Let's take the life of Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. Rahimahullah. See, even now, that a thousand plus years later, we continue to say, Rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy upon him and upon all of those who have influenced the Muslims and have guided us by the permission of Allah to what is most pleasing to Allah and His Messenger. Imam Bukhari decided that he wanted to compile the best book on the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that the world has ever seen. And he made it his mission. By the time he was a young boy, 10, 12 years old, by this time he had already decided what direction he's going to take in life. And he had made it his mission that he's going to be among the best who are in the field of Islamic scholarship. He achieved great feats in memorization, and this was by the permission of Allah, followed by his piety, and that he abstained from sinning. He memorized countless thousands of ahadith, and he understood the means that a Muslim should worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And so Allah Azza wa Jal facilitated for him what would come afterwards. He made his intention pure, and he was willing to put in the effort. He would stay up during the nights, not watching TV like we would. Think about it, and I'm saying this seriously, but we watch TV at night, we stay up all night on Facebook or the internet, doing one thing or another. Some of us might play video games, some of us might entertain ourselves with too much social activity. We might have too many friends, we might be spending too much time with friends, and we're not doing anything productive. We're only entertaining ourselves, and yes, it might be halal. We're not saying it's haram, but we're saying that we have priorities that we need to achieve. We have priorities that we need to look towards. Yes, something might be halal, it's true, but that doesn't mean that it's fucked. We have obligations and we have responsibilities that we need to attend to. And just because something may be permissible by Allah, doesn't mean that it takes priority over that which Allah Azza wa has prescribed to us as a responsibility. So Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, he spent his years studying the life of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until he was inspired by one of the great scholars of Islam whose name was Ishaq ibn Rahaway, one of the great muhaddithin, the hadith scholars, and this man was an epic legend of Islam in and of himself. And he had thousands of students. And one day he said to his students, it would be a great idea for someone to go and collect all of the authentic ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's many inauthentic ones, many fabrications against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it would be great for someone to put in the initiative to collect all of the authentic ahadith or have a, an authentic collection that the masses of the people can rely upon. And out of all of his thousands of students, one man whose name was Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari decided that this was the job he would want to achieve. He decided to go about doing this and he studied many, many years and he traveled across deserts going to different people and going to scholars in the different lands from Egypt to Khurasan to Al-Iraq to Mecca, Medina, Al-Yam. He traveled across the Ummah seeking out the hadith and seeking out the people who knew the hadith. He would cross a desert for one single hadith. We have it at our fingertips now, we don't take advantage of it. He traveled deserts and across great lands in order to find one hadith. SubhanAllah, this is the effort he was willing to put in. All for the, all with the proper intention. And we ask Allah Azza wa that he accepts the work of Bukhari rahimahullah. Look at the direction that he took and the amount of work that he's trying to fulfill. Now look at the result, 16 years. 16 years of hard work, working for the sake of Allah. Later, 16 years later, he had completed his compilation of the most authentic book a human being has ever assembled and it is only second in authenticity after the Qur'an. The Qur'an followed by Sahih al-Bukhari. Nothing in the world is as authentic as Sahih al-Bukhari Accept the Quran. And why is this? Because of the work and the effort that he wanted to put in. He had ambition. He had drive to complete this mission. He knew that it has benefit not only for himself, but it has benefit for the people of his time and for every Muslim until the day of judgment. Go into a masjid and try, try to look at the bookshelf and not find a copy of Bukhari. 
or at least, even if you don't find a copy of Bukhari, you're going to find other hadith books, whether it's Riyadh al-Salihin, whether it's Bulugh al-Muram, whether it's whatever it is, they're going to be based on Bukhari and other books that are of a similar, but even not as high of a caliber as Sahih al-Bukhari. Now every single Muslim who learns how to pray, learns how to do wudu, learns how to fast, learns how to give zakah, learns how to do hajj, learns the life story of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa learns fiqh, learns aqidah, learns sirah. Any Muslim who studies his religion, it is impossible, it is virtually impossible to do it with any type of professionalism and seriousness except that he relies heavily, heavily on Bukhari and in fact it is easy to say that he will rely on Bukhari more than any other book except the Quran. Imagine the profoundness of such a great mission that he took it upon himself to go and accomplish this. And subhanallah he did not do this for worldly benefit. He did it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal as we expect from our ulama. Proof of this is that he did not call his book Sahih al-Bukhari. He called it Sahih, al jamia Al-Musnad, Al-Mukhtasar. SubhanAllah, he didn't even name it after himself. But Allah Azza wa Jal, in order to honor this man for the work that he did and for his sincerity as we expect of him, and Allah knows best, Allah named the book after him. He, tried, he wasn't trying to be named of this great Imam. Some of the ulama, they said, we wish we could write volumes and not even sign our name on it. Of course, it wouldn't be authentic, it wouldn't be a scholarly work if they didn't have their names on it. So that's why they had to sign their names. But if it wasn't for that, they would wish to contribute volumes to the Ummah for the sake of Allah exclusively and not even be acknowledged. They didn't want the people to acknowledge their, them for anything that they did. They had ambitions. These were men with great missions in life. They were willing to establish institutions. They were willing to put works forward that the Ummah would benefit from thousands and thousands of years later. And Allahu A'lam, only Allah knows when the Day of Judgment will be. But we expect that every Muslim will benefit from these works until the Day of Judgment, whenever it is. Whenever it is. And for the past thousand years, there has barely been a Muslim except that he or she has benefited from works like Bukhari and many, many, many others.